Subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon to get notified for the latest tech videos. Hey what's up YouTube this is Vasi here and today in this video I'm going to show you how you can use your M2 NVMe SSD as an external SSD so you can use it with your Windows PC or Mac so I'm going to show you how you can do it and what are the speed tests so let's begin the video for this I have my Lexer NVMe M2 SSD so before you buy any external enclosure you need to know which NVMe SSD you have so here is an M2 type SSD so make sure that you know your type by looking at the website of your SSD the other thing is that it is a 2280 basically 2280 is the size 22 is the width and 80 is the length so whichever place you are going to buy make sure that it is compatible the one that I bought supports 2280 NVMe SSD so that's why I bought that case now here for the case I got this Orico M2 NVMe SSD enclosure again the main thing is that it has uh, 10 gigabits per second transfer speed which is really nice other thing is that it is uh, I think the body is aluminium weight which is going to get make the SSD cool other than that you're going to have a type C cable and that's also opening the box again it's not necessary that you buy this specific one you can buy any of the m2 nvme ssd enclosures but make sure that it is compatible with your ssd and it uh, supports your needs like the speed some enclosures come with 20 gigabits per second as well this is the 10 gigabits one you're going to get this little manual but i'm going to show you other than that you're going to get a type c to type c cable if you're an apple or mac user and if you're a windows user or a user which has a type a usb then you're going to get this type c to usb 3 wire as well which is cool that they are providing both the options other than that you're going to get this little screw so that you can mount the ssd and yeah here we have a screwdriver as well here you're going to have this i don't know really exactly what is the term but this is used for cooling the chips on top of your ssd i really don't remember its name right now i think it's a cooling pad or something like this and last but not least the orico enclosure itself again the top is metal or aluminium made which is going to keep it cool the bottom not sure thing plastic so if you see the size this is the size of an external nvme ssd enclosure which is quite small as compared to the ssd external ssds or your external hard disk drive kit so if you have any nvme ssd lying around this is the best way to use them and to get much better speeds in order to uh, insert the ssd for this particular case you're going to have a screw at the top which you need to open again different ssd enclosures have different mounting options some of them don't even have the screw so it depends after uh, opening the screw you're going to slide it back and here you're going to see the mounts so basically it can support up to four different lengths of ssd and one of them is 2280 which is the size of my nvme ssd and at the back side if you can see on the board the chipset is rtl 9210 so basically this is from realtek so these chipsets are ultra fast and they consume less electricity or they are more efficient that's another reason why i bought this particular or eco case because of this chipset so in order to install the nvme ssd you can do it just by having it in the case or in my case i have it outside so all you need to do is to look at the pins here align them with your nvme ssd place them on the top something like this and you can see it's going to just pop in you can press it and then you can screw it with the screws provided with your ssd enclosure so in my case we got this little one right here all you need to do is to press it on the side from the ssd and you're going to have little clip on the back and you can just press it on the lower hole and it should mount in, in its place something like that as you can see right here again a little difficult one but what can we do and you can see the ssd is quite secure so now what you need to do is to uh, apply or paste this thermal pad on top of your nvme ssd because here are all the chips and it's going to make it cool applying the thermal pad is pretty simple it's basically you can think of it as a double side tape so it's going to have the stickiness on both sides first of all we're going to uh, 
stick it on top of our SSD. And it should go something like that. Not the most perfect and straight thing, but still it should do its job as much as it can. After that, I'm going to insert all of this circuit back along with the SSD. And now what we can do is we can actually remove the top side of this pad as well. Again, think of it as a double side tip. Here you can see. And now what we can do is just simply place our aluminium top back on top of it. No, no, do not need to slide it. Just place on back. Make sure that the cut goes in something like that. And it should go in with a little bit of press. And yeah, after that, I'm just simply going to screw it. Here is the complete thing. So I have made my NVMe SSD as an external SSD using this enclosure. I'm going to use the type C to type C cable so I can connect it with my Mac and initialize it for the first time. You can see we got this little LED lights on both end of that USB cable as well, which is cool because in this way you can tell whether your NVMe SSD is connected to your laptop or not. So if you have a brand new NVMe SSD and if you connect it to your Windows PC or Mac, then it's not going to show you instantly. You need to initialize your external NVMe SSD first. For that, all you need to do is to open uh, your PC. Here you can see this PC and it is not showing my external 512 GB SSD. What you need to do is to right click on this PC and go to manage Basically, we want to open Disk Manager to initialize our SG, SSG. We are going to open Storage, Disk Management and here it should show you your SSG if you have done or installed correctly it into your enclosure and your external enclosure is working. Here you can see initialize disk. You must initialize the disk before logical disk manager can access it. Again, it's showing me my external NVMe SSG as it is brand new. We need to initialize it first. You can initialize it using MBR or GPT GUID partition table. I'm going to press on OK and it's going to initialize our disk. And you can see our disk is online now. The other thing is to allocate it. We're going to right click on it and make a new simple volume. We are going to press on next, select the whole storage. You can assign any letter you want it to press on next and here is the important thing so if you want to use this disk with your windows pc as well as your mac which i'm going to use then you need to select the xfat format and not the ntfs because uh, the ntfs format will not work on mac so i'm using the xfat if you're not you're going to use it with any other mac machine you can select the ntfs format for me it's going to be xfat you can give your label anything so I'm just going to give it the name Wase SSD. Perform a quick format. We're going to press on next and press on finish. You need to format the disk drive in edge before you can exit it. We're going to press on format. And we're going to press on format again. You can see file system is XFAT. Name is this. Quick format. Press on start. OK. Make sure you're formatting the right. Uh, external hard drive and not any external hard drive that you also have connected now you can see we have it healthy primary partition and if i show it you can see it has already detected our nvme ssd as an external hard drive now let me show you how you can initialize it if you are on a mac now if you're connecting that disk for the very first time on your mac then you need to initialize it as well as you did on your windows pc here you can see the disk you attach was not readable by this computer we're going to press on initialize and it should show you your disk as well so currently this is my macintosh hd which is my main drive so do not format this one but on the external side you can see it shows real tech uh, basically our external enclosure which has our NVMe SSD and you can see it says uninitialized. So all we need to do first of all make sure you have selected the correct drive. Press on the erase button 
and you can see it says untitled so we can give it any name was a ssd and after that you need to select the format so we're going to select the xfat format again i want to use this external ssd both for my mac and for my windows pc so i can transfer files in both ways so that's why i am going to select the xfat format if you're going to use only with macs then select the apfs format which is best optimized for macbooks or macs but if you want to go cross platform windows mac just select the xfat format the scheme is again guid and you can go with mbr or master boot but i'm going to stay with this one again press on erase and it's going to start the process erase process is complete click done to continue so it has successfully erased our drive and even though it is saying initialized but uh, we will be able to access it if i go to finder here you can see on locations we have our external ssd so now let me show you some speed test of this on both windows and mac here i am on my windows pc and i have connected my external nvme ssd my laptop has a usb 3.0 port not the fastest one but let's see how much we can get for the speed test i'm using crystal disk mark 6 first of all i am going to select my nvme ssd uh, we're going to transfer a 4 gigabits file virtually and the number of tests will be one press on start so the test has been completed and the maximum read speed is 438 megabits per second and the write speed is 431 megabits per second again these results are going to vary depending on your machine the usb port you are going to have and the speed of your internal nvme ssd this is the nm620 from lexer which can go up to 3500 megabits per second so the main limitation is coming from our external enclosure and also our usb 3.0 port but looking at the price i mean it is much cheaper as compared to other pre-made external fastest uh, ssds so for a little less price not bad and now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy a, a video file from my pc to my ssd it is a 1.7 gb file and you can see we're just flying away with our 260 megabits per second speed and if i copy and paste this same file to my desktop uh, you can see 350 megabits per second so large files ain't going to be a problem a lot and the graph is going down at the very end but not that much for the speed test on my macbook i'm going to be using a software called black magic so for the first time you need to select the drive uh, so here is the one versus ssd press on open and for the stress we're going to go up to 5 gb virtual file transfer so i'm going to press on start this is going to depend on many factors the speed including which port you have in my case i have the thunderbolt 4 port which is i think one of the most top best and also depend on your external closure Again, this enclosure supports, I think, up to 10 gigabits per second speed, which is around 1200 uh, MBs per second. But and it's also going to depend on the speed of your SSD. So I have the Lexer NM620 SSD, and you can see the write speed that I can get from this is 436 megabits per second, and the read speed is around 730 megabits per second, which is okay, not bad as compared to the external ssds or hard drive this is still pretty much faster and don't forget that this is much cheaper if you go on to the much better external ssds then they cost a lot so looking at the price it's not bad so here i have a video in 1080p so its size is around let me just show you i think it was around 1.72 mgb yes it is a 1.72 gb file so i am going to copy this to my nvme ssd and you can see that i think around a second or two the whole video has been copied to my nvme ssd and if i paste it back to my desktop uh, i'm just going to press on replace uh, we are going to just you know it's like just a two or three second and a one gb file has been transferred so it is not bad looking at the speed test so yeah guys in this way you can use your 
uh, nvme ssg as an external ssg with your mac or windows pc if you guys like this video like here subscribe if you have any other questions write them in the comment section below and if you have subscribed to my channel please do so other than that thank you for watching and as always stay safe